coach, you guys got off to a slow start. What do you guys, what do you attribute that to? Well, I'll say we missed some shots that we used to make. Uh, we got some open looks. Uh, they're also, uh, uh, their defensive coverage, I think at times, you know, bothered us uh, because of, you know, at times they play a matchup zone, there are times they are switching. Uh, they may be in zone, but they are switching. Um, you know, they have a, a lot of different, um, you know, defensive schemes that they throw at you. So um, there were times when we had open shots, always there were some shots that we may have rushed. But overall, um, I love the fact that our guys stay, you know, in, in it. Uh, they get down on themselves. The mental stability was definitely present today. At the same time, they made some pretty tough shots in the early going. I mean, are those just kind of ones that you just tip your hat to them? You know, there, there were shots that they had the earned because they were very good defensive effort uh, as well as uh, the, the technique that we you know, displayed in the first half. I mean, our guys were just flying around. Um, they also had some opportunities where they drove us, but we still uh, put our hands up, try to, of course, defend them without fouling. They just made some tough shots. Steve? Juwan, you, Juwan, you talked about mental stability and Franz Wagner seems to be a good example of, of that coming out doing what he did in the second half. Talk about what he was able to do for you today. Well, Franz, uh, you know, you guys, you all think he's been having a bad stretch. But for me, you know, he's been playing great for us because Franz has been affecting the game in other ways other than just putting the ball in the basket. He's been out there defending, rebounding, battling against, you know, bigs who may have, you know, 50 to 70 pounds more than him. Uh, some are also taller than him, uh, but he's been competing, he's been diving on the floor for loose balls. Uh, he's been affecting the game in different ways. Tonight, it was his night, and the shot went in, but there, there were also good looks, and he was aggressive. But it goes to show you that, you know, Franz is a guy who was a competitor. On your right with James. Do you want, can you, I guess, take us through the final play, I guess, what you saw on it? Well, we got the ball uh, in the hands of the right person we wanted to have. And I love the look that we had. Uh, he had an opportunity to either drive him for a basket, throw it back to Zay, or, or if they came to help, um, which they brought everyone to the paint uh, for the spray. So a uh, great decision on his part, and we lived with the results. And by the way, we had a chance to tip it in, and it just didn't fall for us. No problem with John. You talk about the uh, energy that uh, Johns and the Julius gave you off the bench, and the maybe a little bit about the decision to keep uh, Brandon in there through that last stretch. I know you guys watched the game. Brandon gave us some great minutes, and uh, you know it's always like the next man up mentality: stay ready. Uh, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, and that's how Brandon and all our players approaches the game. And you just got to always know when your name is called, and Brandon delivered today. You're right with Greg. Coach, about five minutes to go, you're up by two, you got the ball. They've been running the, the three quarters trap on you. you. They turn it over, or you turn it over, they hit a three right away. How much of a momentum shift was that for you guys in the game? Hey, this game is all about runs. And, you know, you're playing against one of the best teams in the country. So, well, there are going to be some, some possessions out there where, you know, someone may make a shot, someone may make a tough shot. And they, they made some tough shots. Um, especially in the paint, but we, we stay with it. Now, that's why I love our team and I love how we compete. Our guys stay with it, and they get down and continue to go out there and, and figure it out and find ways to, of course, get our, when our ball is in our hands to make the right play, and we did. All the way in the back of the front, the decision to go a little bit smaller and slide Brandon right to the five. What did you think of that look and how much of that was kind of dictated by today? versus, you know, you, you may be wanting to implement that a little bit more. You know, that's one thing about coaching. You've got to look at the situations and what's best for your team. Uh, and looking at the time and possessions and then looking at it overall, like what you need to make the adjustment in order to give your team a spark. And Brandon was that guy who I trust that when he got in the ball game, he would do something special for us. And he's been doing that throughout the year. Uh, and tonight was no surprise. Stay there with Noah. Um, Pritchard sort of took the game over for them toward the end of the second half. What, what did you see with him and was there anything? Uh, what do you mean by took the game over? Uh, was getting, getting to the rim consistently for them and 
Well, Pritchard is, is a gamer, and you know he's it's not his first rodeo. And I watched Pritchard doing the uh, NCAA tournament, and I've always been a fan of his game because he's like a gritty guy, smart player, a high IQ, and also he can make tough shots um, out there on the perimeter as well as some of the finishes. But every bucket he made, he had earned it, and he had to work for it. And, um, our guys like X was defending him, playing one-on-one, -on -one, great one-on-one -on -one defense. Um, you know, we switched off on him, and our bigs, when he went to the paint to uh, either try to make or draw a foul, uh, we were very disciplined on how we contested his shot. But overall, uh, I love how our defensive disposition was displayed today. Watch. Jamal, excuse me, you guys have played quite a few really good teams so far this year. What did Oregon present different? Was it their, their pressure, the defensive uh, uh, mentality? What did they present differently that bothered you guys? Well, Oregon has played all year um, something quite different than a lot of other teams that you face. They do uh, maybe, I would say, 85 to close to 90% of full court pressure. Or, and then, they, you know, I, I kind of like, I count the three-quarter pressure as well as part of the field court pressure. And then they do an excellent job of, when they get back to half court, of trying to make you guess and make the clock be a work against you by making you say, okay, are you in the zone? Okay, are you in the man? But we practiced it. We were prepared for it. Um, and give them credit. They, they played a good game. Great ball game. 71-70, overtime. Got time for a couple Nothing to be upset about. Uh, Joan, going back to uh, the perimeter game for Oregon, what about the performance of Anthony Mathis? It seemed like you guys didn't have to answer for him all day long. Anthony Mat Matson shot 10 threes. So he gave himself a chance. <laughs> and he made some tough shots early on that was deep from the floor. So um, I don't know what you're talking about, but and no, no mean, I don't mean to say disrespect, uh, but um, I thought our guy did a hell of a job defensively. Back. Uh, Coach. Um, Unfortunately from the three, you know, this is one of the first teams that have shot 50% from three. We've done a pretty good job in the past of guarding three point line. Uh, unfortunately tonight, you know, they made some bombs. Coach, uh, you got a week now between games. Just talk about maybe the approach this week, uh, responding, you know, three or four, and then you've lost three or four. Just, just the response. It's going to be a tough week, man. It's going to be a tough week for all of us. Because you know what? Overall, we all care. We care about the, uh, each one another. Uh, we care about the results, whether it's win or losses. And when you lose two in a row, it's going to sting because we're human. And I'm not going to sit up here and just like just give you some type of a, a politically correct answer. So we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to think about two losses. And it's gonna be painful because all our guys in that locker room, they're hurt right now. So am I. <laughs> Andrew, you wanna close us out? Juwan, this place was packed for the first time this season. I mean, I know you're coaching, but were you able to kind of take that, take the atmosphere in? Love Ann Arbor. That's why I came back. And I remember the times when, when I played here and you know, the first game against Duke when we were freshmen. That today's energy in the building, today's crowd for my that moment. Okay, so I appreciate all the fans for being out here today and supporting. I know there are students right now who are for, um, studying for their finals, and, and you know it's a very challenging time. Um, it's the same goes for our players. I commend them for being able to balance both as student athletes. You know, they've taken away and gone to Iowa while our other students are here studying. Um, this last two days, we're trying to, of course, focus on the academics and also prepare for Oregon. And then have an early game, you know, not much rest for them. You know, it, it's a lot for a teenager, young adult. So uh, I commend my, my players for what they had to endure uh, and also what they're looking forward to for the next couple of weeks.